So today we're gonna to be talking about the Nano Leaf lines. Now this is the smarter kit that I have with me today. Overall, I could recommend this product to you. It looks really cool up on the wall, so much so that I really kind of want to expand it. Now the smarter kit comes as advertised with nine lines. Uh, it comes with nine of the hexagonal hubs, and those are the little hubs you connect this all into. Uh, it comes with the AC adapter, as well as the included controller. Here's just a couple of specifications you might be interested in. The lines themselves are 0.31 inches high, with a width of 11 inches, depth of 0.78 inches, and a weight of 0.08 pounds. Now the hubs themselves, they are 0.85 inches high with a width of 1.57 inches and a depth of 1.36 inches. Uh, also have a weight of 0.03 pounds. A few general specifications you might want to know about is each panel is rated at 20 lumens. They're plenty bright in my opinion. Uh, two color zones per line supports 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. 5 gigahertz is not supported and a maximum of 18 lines per 42 watt power supply. Now there is a 42 watt power supply included with each smarter kit or they are sold separately. There is a 250 line maximum per layout and there is a calculator available to help you determine how many power supplies are needed for that. Now there is a power diagnostics mode available if your setup is not optimized. If it is optimized, it won't be available. Uh, Siri, Google and Alexa voice control is also available. Now this kit is $199.99, but I've seen it on sale quite a bit, so you should be able to get it you know, for at least 20 bucks less than that. Uh, it also comes as an expansion kit, I think with three additional lines, not $69.99, not on sale. Or you can buy the individual lines, which I believe were $24.99. Now this kit uses the hexagonal hubs, but you can also get this with a square hub, meaning so instead of kind of just branching off at an angle, you can kind of, you can just square it up. So I'll put affiliate links to all of these products in the description below. So assembling the product is really, really easy. Basically you just take the uh, hub itself and the line, the little connector on the end there, and it just kind of clips into whichever orientation you want it into. Uh, you know, you get it in there and just kind of press it firmly and it clicks right in, you're ready to go. But uh, overall, really easy to assemble. The control hub can be placed in any hub position that you want. One of the hubs is your power hub, which is where the power cable is going to come into. And so obviously you're gonna take that into your controller and then the controller is going to plug into the wall. And so go ahead and get it plugged in. Give it a few minutes to boot. Uh, just take your time getting installed on the wall. Look at some of the resources that are available to you in the application and on the website. You can design what you want and then overlay it onto a photo uh, of your wall and move it around in real time. So it's actually, it's not just a photo, but it looks pretty good. It should give you a pretty close idea of what that uh, design is gonna look like. So what I did was I just got down on the floor with it and kind of started working through some designs. But once I decided on the design, uh, it was just a matter of figuring out where on the wall I wanted to put it. So what I ended up doing was just finding the center line on my wall and marked it. And then what I did is just used a pencil and I made really light registration marks around you know, the hubs in the corners so that I kind of knew what position I wanted it on. You know, I just pulled it down, clean those up. Uh, you know, you want that to be a nice clean surface to put it up on. And then I just started with the first hub, uh, you know, pull the back of the tape off, stick it up there, hold it for 30 seconds and you're good to go. You can also mount these hubs to the wall by using screws. You just stick a little screwdriver in there and pop that back plate off, screw that to the wall and you're good to go. Now the screws are not included for you to do that. I just attached the first horizontal line there and then got my level out and just made sure that I was level. Got the second hub put on, just double checked it. Anyways, I then just continued to work my way around this whole design, getting the hubs in and putting the lines in. And so anyways, I found that really easy to do. Press and hold each one 30 seconds and it's been up there for quite a few weeks now. It's not had any problems. So to get the hub removed, uh, just give the hub a firm tug and that will expose the back plate. And at the edge of the back plate, you're gonna see a remaining piece of tape. Uh, it's just like a commander strip, just pull it straight up and even with your wall and just slowly kind of stretch it basically. And that should release uh, the back plate here. Uh, I didn't have too much trouble with it. I have to give the wall a bit of a clean up there, but we should be good to go with it. All right, so once you have that installed, you're ready to go. Go ahead and get the application installed on either iOS or Android, or you can use the desktop app. I used it on the PC. So once you get that installed, uh, you will need to create a NanoLeaf account. And once you're logged into the software, you're going to go ahead and pair up your first device. Go ahead and open 
Now to leave, go ahead and get uh, logged into it. Once you're done, you wanna select a home. Then you're gonna go ahead and add device. We're gonna do decor and in this case, uh, we've got the line. So we're gonna go ahead and click on pair. This is where it's telling you to add accessory. This is where you wanna scan the code or you can set the phone up close to the controller and it should pick it up that way. There it goes. So light, add to Apple Home, yes. Okay, and then we need to make sure the accessory is powered on. And then you're gonna assign it to a room. Office in this case. Now I'm gonna give it a new name here. Hardware Artisan. We'll continue. Light added to my home. Now what you wanna do is you wanna match the orientation of this. All right, so you can go ahead and move this around however it is, you can zoom in and out. This is kind of how I've got this device. Click done, device sync. Now you can back this up to the NanoLeaf Cloud which means that any scenes that you've created and you've saved to it and whatever's in the application, you can back it up on the cloud and then once you restore, you gotta reinstall everything, log back into the cloud and you can just resync up your device. So let's talk for just a second about the controller cap and what some of the buttons do. Obviously, uh, the first one is the power on and off button, which simply turns the device on and off. Uh, the next one is the plus and the minus key, which simply dim and brighten the lights on whatever selected scene you have. Uh, the rhythm icon button just simply cycles through any of the rhythm scenes that are on the device. The shuffle button just randomly cycles through different color scenes. If you want to go back to a previous one, hold the button for three seconds. Uh, the up and the down button here just cycles sequentially through all of the color scenes that you have on the device up and down. Uh, a couple of unique button combinations is you can hold the plus and the minus key together and it will cycle through the white lighting sequences. Uh, another one that's unique is if you hold the power button and the rhythm button together for 30 seconds, it enables a hotspot mode which is useful for if you lose internet access. All right, so once you are there, this is going to be the overview of the application. And again, up at the top, my home, and you've got whatever rooms here. The only one I have is office. It's the only device I have. But if you have multiple devices, you can kind of get creative with it in that manner. So, and then over here, of course, we can edit and we can add rooms and add more devices if we want to. We can turn the device on or off with this button. Now, if we click the teardrop here or we click the icon, it will bring up the main control screen for us. Now we'll say out here on the main screen, this number here or where it says off, it's just telling you the status and what the brightness is. And uh, if you turn auto brightness on, that number will change kind of on its own. You can click the settings button up here. And from here, you can turn on auto brightness. Now there's two modes to auto brightness. Uh, you got functional, and you've got ambience there. Scene transition, just if you have like a playlist or something going, uh, between each scene, it will just turn it off. It's a way for you to know that it's doing a new scene. And then of course, it gives you some basic about features, you know, serial number, model number, firmware version, things like that. And then of course, you can do an identification, which will blink the light. And then of course, you can delete it from the software as well. All right, so back on the main screen, you can manually set the brightness with this slider bar here. And then we get kind of which scenes do we want to look at? We got all, which means we can just scroll through and see all of them. Uh, you get a favorites list. So this section, uh, playlist, you can just create your own custom playlist. Uh, we can loop it, shuffle it, uh, scene duration. We can set all of those uh, parameters around this. Uh, we get a couple of ways to create scenes. If we click create scenes, we can go basic, uh, which is just setting a single color. Uh, paint, which means we can use multiple colors and kind of determine which uh, lines get which. Each line is broken down into two different colors. So we can go there and we can go ahead and add new uh, palette list, which means you can select which colors to choose from. And then we'll save that. We can save the palette as whatever you want, or you can use one of the existing ones. It doesn't matter. Of course, we can paint here and just uh, go up here and we can draw on it. With, like say we want to do blue, we can just touch blue, select red, red, green, so on and so forth. Or we can fill the whole thing if we use the paint bucket. Uh, we can also select a motion here. We can select flow or we can do rhythm and this will just change your colors based on what that is. Lots more motions that you can select from, all sorts of stuff. Uh, but once you got your scene set, you can go ahead and save it. 
give it a name. We're gonna just call it Hardware Artisan again. All right, you've got Magic Scene. Basically, just start typing. Type any word you want. You know, it's taking that keyword and looking at some color palettes that go with that word, but it tries to set the light uh, based on that. Now, just going around the rest of the application here, uh, obviously down at the bottom, we've got uh, the cloud icon, which is Discover. This is where you can come in here and you can download additional scenes, playlists, and motions. I recommend just getting here and playing around with it. Some of them are cool, some of them aren't. Now in the middle, you can click resources. Now this is the layout assistant that we discussed earlier. I found this to be pretty cool. And go ahead and we'll select the lines, layout assistant. Now this is not perfect in how you control it. This up here is you tell it how many hubs you have of what type. And then if we click a line, we can kind of move it and grab it around, kind of wherever you want it. Uh, regardless of this, you can get your design however you want. And then if you go ahead and click this icon over to the far right, but then you can select the surface, click on it, and kind of zoom out. From here, you can move it around, you can rotate it. And it's, it should be an approximation of where that would fit on there. So you can get an idea kind of what that would look like on the wall over there. And you can walk around. It's actually a pretty cool function. You shuffle, it'll just give you some design ideas. You can kind of keep going through here to kind of help inspire you on how to do it. Uh, circadian lighting is a way to just, you know, at certain times of the day, uh, change your color temperatures. We've all seen that in windows and everything, kind of cool. And then here's some of the smart integrations. Obviously we talked about Google Home, Apple HomeKit, Alexa, SmartThings, IFTTT. Uh, this is a thread router, so it uh, supports that. I haven't done a whole lot with that in the home devices, uh, but you can click that and learn more information about that. Uh, schedules, let's talk about that. Now you can create certain schedules. Uh, you can give it a name, the time that you want this schedule to occur, the days of the week you wanna repeat it, select your device, hardware artisan, okay? And then you can select on here to select what action to take. So that's pretty much just a kind of a quick blow through the application. It's really got everything you need to control it. Uh, now the desktop application is really just basically the same thing, just you know, on your Windows desktop. So the control panel on the device itself, you can kind of cycle through some of the scenes you have. So one function the desktop application has that I don't see in the mobile app is a screen mirror function. Now initially this didn't work when I first tried it, but I noticed that Nanoleaf mentioned it was fixed in version 1.3.2. So I've got that version of Nanoleaf installed and now it seems to work great. It's got multiple different options for arranging your screen, you know, and how it translates into the lights. But as you can see here, it's working pretty good. The other software that works with Nanoleaf is the Razer Synapse software. Uh, I did talk about that a little bit in my Corsair integration video. It does work and it worked okay. It's not nicely as done as what the Corsair integration is. But uh, anyways, just know that it will work with Razer Synapse if you use that software. Anyways, so my overall opinion of Nano Leaf lines is very positive. This is the first Nano Leaf product I've ever done. I've had no affiliation with Nano Leaf. I bought this with my own money, but I've really enjoyed playing around with it. I like the way that it looks up on the wall. Uh, my favorite part is that it integrates with Corsair so I can sync it up with my PC and kind of some of the other external lighting that I've got going on here. So anyways, can I recommend this product to you? It's one of those things where if you can get over the cost of this, because for 200 bucks, Man, I hate to say it, but you know, it's like everything. It feels overpriced. Uh, whether it actually is or not, I'm not sure. Uh, but 200 bucks is pretty steep for nine lines of light. Let's be honest about it. If you can get over that, uh, I can certainly recommend it as far as the product itself. It's a lot of fun, looks great. It's got some good integrations and some expandability to it. Anyways, there's a big world out there of lights to put on your wall. But my experience with Nano Leaf has been very positive, so much so that I want to continue working with it. I have to budget it in because it's kind of pricey. Uh, but I'm also going to take a look at some of these cheaper lights and I'll share those with you. Anyway, so that is going to do it for today. If you have any questions or comments about this particular product or this video, please let me know in the comments below. I get to those when I can, the best I can. I'm always happy to help out. So anyways, that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching.